to the most successful money maker in modern finance, Jim Simon. Just some people like me trading the market, they take advantage of you. With something of a mathematical phenom. <laughs> Jim Simon's medallion fund has done 39% net of fees for three decades. They, they found little algorithms that worked. There's something called the efficient market theory. But they were very, very smart. Yeah. Very smart and very rich. And yet he's a complete outsider, mathematician, a code breaker. It was 1946 when a family doctor suggested to Jim a career in medicine and warned that mathematics would never fill his pockets. Our protagonist, who was just eight years old at the time, took it as a challenge and became the richest mathematician ever born on the planet. From a math teacher to a Cold War codebreaker and entering the stock market as an innovative novice to becoming the greatest investor on Wall Street and the most successful hedge fund manager of all time. Perhaps no one's life has taken such unique twists and turns. There was a time when Jim Simmons, at the age of 30, was unemployed and facing hardships for his livelihood. And starting 2024, that very Jim Simmons stands tall in the top 50 richest persons globally, his wealth exceeding a mammoth $30 billion. Amid all these wonders, the burning question arises, how did Jim Simmons achieve all this? What was his secret elixir of investing that enabled a man with zero market knowledge and a team with no financial experts to amass a fortune surpassing $100 billion over the past three decades? Our story unfolds in the year 1938, when James Harris Simmons was born into a Jewish family in Massachusetts, America. While most kids dislike studying, especially when it comes to numbers, Jim had a secret love affair with mathematics. At the tender age of three, while other kids were busy playing with toys, Jim was able to solve complex math problems. And most of the credit for nurturing this interest in mathematics goes to his father. When Matthew Simmons saw Jim's fascination for numbers, he took a proactive role in fueling his curiosity. In a unique approach, he used to reward Jim with some coins for solving math problems. There's a story where Jim and his father were going somewhere and his father mentioned needing to stop and put gas in the car. Jim recounts saying, well, why don't you just use half the amount that's in the tank and then use half of that, and then use half of that, etc., and you'll never run out. This particular incident marked a pivotal moment in Jim Simmons' early life, representing his first encounter with Zeno's paradox at the age of four, which can be considered an astonishing feat at this age. During his childhood, many people suggested he forget about math and explore other careers, as they thought being a mathematician might not pay the bills. But guess what? Jim never listened to these well-meaning folks. He was curious about mathematics and wanted to give it a shot, even though he wasn't exactly sure what math experts did. Fast forward to 1952, when 14-year-old Jim was working at a store called Breck's Garden Supply, trying to make some extra money. The store owners, an ambitious couple, once asked Jim about his future plans. Excitedly, he told them he wanted to go to MIT for higher studies. The couple burst out in laughter as it seemed like a wild dream to them. But here's a twist. After completing high school, Jim defied the odds and got enrolled at MIT, skipping the first year of mathematics due to the advanced placement courses he had taken in high school. In the year 1958, after obtaining his bachelor's degree in mathematics from MIT, Jim decided to pursue a PhD at the University of California, Berkeley. Around the same time, he met his future wife, Barbara Bluestein, and the couple chose to go to Berkeley together. It's worth noting that Barbara is a renowned American computer scientist. Jim and Barbara got married in 1959. However, they were eventually divorced in 1974. Shifting our focus back to Jim's genius achievements, he earned his PhD in mathematics from Berkeley at the young age of 23. Barbara wasn't the only one who crossed the path with Jim's life at that time. While at Berkeley, Jim teamed up with the Chinese math whiz Xing Shen Chern, and together they were onto something big, which I'm going to reveal after a while. Jim's brilliance in mathematics landed him a teaching job at Harvard University, where he spent the next two years of his life. However, Jim was craving new opportunities and was eagerly seeking an adrenaline boost in his life, which he couldn't find in the somewhat dull job of a teacher. 
This was the time when the United States was entangled in the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and American intelligence agencies were struggling to crack Soviet codes. Faced with a lack of success, they decided to recruit individuals like Simmons, who may not have had experience in code breaking, but possessed a genius intellect and fresh ideas. In the year 1964, Jim received a job offer from IDA, the Institute of Defense Analysis, a renowned research organization. And without a second thought, Jim dove into serving his country against the Soviets. While working at IDA, Jim not only cracked many complex enemy codes, but also learned how to develop mathematical models to interpret patterns in seemingly meaningless data. He also succeeded in creating an ultra-fast code-breaking algorithm in collaboration with his colleagues. However, Jim's thirst for success was yet not quenched, and he was hungry for even more ambitious plans in his life. From a very young age, Jim had an acute understanding of the importance of money and power in life. Therefore, in his spare time, Jim delved into the world of the stock market and corporate news. He set out to develop a system that would harness the formidable power of mathematics and algorithms to crack the world of investing and the stock market. But before Jim could proceed further in this direction, a tragic twist of fate intervened that completely changed the trajectory of his life. In the year 1968, after disclosing his opposition to the Vietnam War to his colleagues at IDA, Jim Simmons was immediately terminated. He was stunned. At the age of 30, having responsibility for three children, he was unemployed and found himself in urgent need of a new job. But just when things were looking uncertain, Stony Brook University in New York offered him to lead their math department. And despite his initial reluctance, Jim had to return to academia. However, upon joining Stony Brook, he once again raised the banner of success and wrote one more achievement to his name. And here, Xing Chen Chern, a friend of Jim Simmons from their Berkeley days, enters into our story again. In the year 1974, this dynamic duo teamed up on a research paper titled Characteristic Forms and Geometric Invariance, introducing the concept of churn simmons form. Now, without making you dive into the ocean of complexities, let me tell you that this mathematical theory is the secret sauce behind the development of special quantum computers by big shots like Microsoft and 99 others. In the year 1976, the American Mathematical Society awarded Jim the Oswald Veblen Prize in Geometry, which was considered the highest honor in his field. While his incredible achievements were always admired by his fellow academics, Jim's gaze was fixed on a different prize, money. And this time, at Stony Brook University in New York, Wall Street wasn't that far away. Finally, after 10 years of a teaching job at the university, in the year 1978, Jim was convinced of his profit potential and left academia to start his own investment firm. This marks the beginning of Jim's first hedge fund, Monometrics. Soon after initiating his new venture, he met his close friend Leonard Baum and offered him to become a partner at Monometrics. Leonard was a genius mathematician who had previously worked with Jim at IDA. He was the creator of the Baum-Welch algorithm, which plays a vital role in crafting today's electrical engineering, statistical computing, bioinformatics, and speech recognition software. Jim and Leonard collaborated to create a predictive model they believed would be useful for monitoring movements in the financial markets. It's worth noting that this is in the late 1970s and early 1980s, a time when the internet was not yet in existence. For hours on end, they used to sit in their offices analyzing charts and graphs, filling pages with calculations. Now it was time to put their algorithm to the test. They decided to first try it out in the currency market, and boom, they were successful, making a substantial amount of money. If you want to feel how powerful their idea and their mathematical model was, just listen to this example because it's going to blow your mind. One sunny day, while relaxing on a beach, Leonard Baum suddenly realized that the British pounds would surge that night, as per their algorithm. In a flash, they dashed from the beach to their office in Long Island, still in their beach gear, and brought tons of British pounds when it was very low. Surprisingly, the pound began to climb rapidly, as they had predicted, 
resulting in a spectacular profit for them. What adds to an interesting twist to the story is that Jim and Leonard had no knowledge whatsoever about British policies, and they were completely unaware of the reasons behind the sudden rise in the British pound. This eventually led their venture towards millions of dollars in profit. Everything seemed straightforward and simple at first, but soon things got a bit tricky down the road. Monometrics algorithm faced some serious challenges, struggling to accurately predict market trends and make profitable calls. They began experiencing consistent losses, and at one point, Monometrics was on the verge of collapse. Fortunately, luck was on Jim's side, and he secured timely funding from new investors, saving the company from ruin. However, Jim realized the importance of developing a much more accurate algorithm to successfully navigate market movements and generate profits. While other investment firms were relying on old-fashioned fundamentals and business news, Jim Simmons decided to bring the power of computers into his venture. He believed that computers would not only handle data much better than human brains, but also have much higher accuracy and zero emotions. It was when Monometrics was renamed Renaissance Technologies. Jim Simmons joined forces with geniuses like James Axe and Sandor Strauss, who worked on revolutionary changes in Leonard Baum's algorithm. In addition, in the year 1993, they hired Robert Mercer, a key engineer at the computer giant IBM, who later became the CEO of Renaissance Technologies. Jim Simmons accumulated the oldest possible data from the stock market and continued to search for patterns in it through mathematical analysis, which forms the foundation of his business today. In 1998, Jim Simmons, along with James Axe, initiated the Medallion Fund under Renaissance Technologies, which is currently the most profitable portfolio within Renaissance. Some experts even regard it as the greatest money-making machine of all time. However, during its initial year of operation, the Medallion Fund only yielded a 9% return, while it experienced a 4% loss in the subsequent year. But as they say, investment is a long game, and the Medallion Fund proved this saying true. In 1990, its returns surpassed a 55%, and since then, it's consistently delivered a gross annual return of a mind-blowing 66.1%. From that point onwards, it has generated trading profits exceeding $100 billion. The stock market was never considered a puzzle until this ingenious mathematician arrived and solved it. As of early 2024, Jim Simmons' net worth is estimated to be $30.7 billion, ranking him amongst the top 50 richest people in the world. And believe me, the day is not far when Jim Simmons might appear in the top 10 richest persons list. And who knows, one day no one might be able to compete with him in terms of wealth. That's the power of exponential genius. What do you think? Do you believe Jim Simmons' extraordinary math skills will make him the world's richest person? Share your opinion in the comments below. Thanks for watching.